the government plan 2020 to 2023. If you don't know, I'm John Lafondre, Senator, and for my sins, Chief Minister. Um, we're hoping to finish by around 8 o'clock, and the game plan is we'll be roughly half an hour, we believe. Uh, politicians, of course, don't like to talk very much, and then hopefully that gives you at least an hour to, um, uh, to then quiz us and uh, look for the rest questions you've got. The aim as well as also is to, um, uh, I've got the uh, a, a, a section which is essentially to give you the context, the overall government plan and some of the figures, and then I'll hand you over to these two winning volunteers, uh, uh, Deputy John Young, at the Environment, Deputy John Lewis, the yeah. Minister for Infrastructure, and that's to then go through the actual theme that we're talking about today, which is obviously around uh, priorities on the environment and, as I said, infrastructure. Um, I should also say before we start that the event is being filmed live for Facebook. The audience won't be shown in the video, but if you do want to remain anonymous, uh, please don't give your name if you ask a question. If you don't mind, if you don't care, please do give your name so then I know who, who we're talking to. Right, so we go to slide four. I want to outline <coughs> what's referred to the core principles uh, for the plan. And basically, it's got to be funded each year, so there'll be debt like for future governments to mop up. Uh, we're making some decisions today that will benefit and protect future generations of islanders. It's about preparing for the future, so if we can hopefully withstand shocks to the economy and also afford care in old age for those who need it. We are investing in what is referred to as the five strategic priorities, and essentially by way of background, uh, you may or may not be aware, for those who follow, we put out uh, what's called the Common Strategic uh, Policy, um, which was pretty well unanimously adopted by the states. This then builds up to how we fund and, and uh, implement the themes that are approved, or sorry, the policies that are approved in that document. It's about investing in the fabric of our island. There's 349 million of capital spending over the next four years. That's not a small figure. But we've also established an efficiencies program which will substantially fund uh, that new investment. And um, although we're spending more in each year, we are, we are still balancing the budget. And the numbers are actually uh, less than was in the original budget that was published in 2019. So, the five priorities that were agreed between the Council of Ministers and the State's Assembly are to put children first, uh, obviously up there on the screen, to improve Ireland's well-being and mental and physical health, to create a sustainable, vibrant economy and a skilled local workforce for the future, to reduce income inequality and improve the standard of living, and the topic for today, to protect and value our environment. For every member of this government, uh, in terms of putting children first, has pledged to children that we will make Jersey the best place to grow up. We've been putting foundations in place over the past year, continuing the work begun by the previous council ministers, and we'll continue to deliver the recommendations made by the Independent Jersey Care Inquiry, in particular, driving forward a significant operational improvement program for children's services. We will get an update on that on Monday, uh, when basically um, the two-year review into the original care inquiry is going to be announced, and obviously we'll see more on, of focus on that on that day. But the principle is we'll support, improve, and invest in our children's services. We'll review our education system and put it onto a sustainable financial footing, and we'll make sure that children have a voice go to the next one. Uh, well-being and health will improve Islanders' well-being, mental and physical health. This is about moving away from focusing only on physical health to giving mental health equal attention. We're putting an extra 3.2 million next year into improving mental health services and facilities. The new model of care is also about shifting away from hospital-based services to more investment in Islanders' well-being, in prevention and in community services closer to home. And that also includes an extra half million pounds in 2020 to encourage active lifestyles. A vibrant and skilled workforce, or local workforce. We need a thriving economy to underpin Jersey's success. Hopefully that's a given. So we've invested in protecting our economy for the long term as the key driver of our standard of living. We're focused on navigating the choppy waters of Brexit over the coming months and years, I'd say certainly in the next few weeks as well, and we're setting aside resources to help Jersey respond to this unique economic and political event. We are in a, a generational change at the moment, I would suggest. We're also stepping up our investment in promoting Jersey internationally. Income inequality 
We're taking action on income inequality and on housing. So access to good quality housing is one of the major factors in people's sense of well-being. We've challenged the Housing Policy Development Board, which I set up earlier, uh, this year to think long term, and their proposals will come before the Assembly next year. In the plan, we've earmarked £10 million for affordable housing in 2021. We're also tackling inequality and supporting inclusion, and that includes an additional half million pounds to improve support for disabled people and their carers. And then we come to the theme for today, which I'm not going to summarise too much now, because that's what we're going to hear about uh, shortly. But that was very much a whistle-stop tour through some of the headlines of the government plan that illustrate the investment and change we're bringing forward to deliver on the five common strategic policy priorities that the Assembly previously approved and obviously were proposed by this government. The key, uh, one of the other key elements in this process is about modernisation. Now, I frequently said that fundamental change to our public services is required, and indeed that was one of my core commitments to you at the last election. It's going to take time, it will involve difficult decisions, and it will require investment. Modernising government underpins this whole plan, and we won't be able to deliver our ambition all the investment in these priorities unless we modernise public services and the way we do government. That's a pretty fundamental message. Okay, so what's different? So before we move on to how we're financing the plan, it, it is important to explain how what we're doing differs to what has been done before. Now pre previously, we, prevented, we presented our budget separately from our planned activities you like how we're going to spend money. So this plan to get brings together both the spending and the income. And if you're not familiar with the process, it might it might astonish you that that hasn't been done in all my political time in office uh, since 2005. It used to be done in days gone by, but uh, it, just before that I, in fact, both myself and Kevin were elected, the decision had been set taken to separate that. So the idea here. It's about specifically linking the finances to the activities we're proposing to deliver. It's also about flexibility of having a rolling four-year plan rather than the rigidity of the previous, what was called the medium-term financial plan, which was basically the spending plan, and we had two of those over the last two, uh, of, over the last set of assemblies, and they fixed our budgets in the last time for four years. It was a very rigid approach. We were also considering the funds across the board instead of in isolation of each other, and finally, but certainly not least, we're prioritizing, prioritizing long-term sustainability, not just of our finances, but it's also about health and well-being of islanders. So the financial principles, there are some core ones. Long-term public finances are sustainable for both the government and the island. A robust capital spending program which invests heavily in long-term benefits for Jersey. Investment in more efficient technology and processes and in our people. Setting fees at a fair level that enables us to deliver the services islanders need and want. And finally, designing taxes that focus on changing the approach and behaviours of islanders to support our priorities to improve islanders' health, well-being, and to protect and value our environment. And we've also taken uh, and considered and taken on board the recommendations from experts. So earlier this year, um, the Fiscal Policy Panel, which is a, a board set up in, in previous times, advised the government to protect ourselves against any future potential financial crisis, particularly with the current uncertainty surrounding Brexit. And that advice included running surpluses throughout the period of the government plan, using the current more buoyant economy as an opportunity to raise more capital, continuing to boost what we refer to as the stabilisation fund, addressing the forecast future deficit in our long-term care fund, and finally, implementing an efficiencies program. I'm going to run through those briefly. So following that panel's advice, we're going to continue to bolster the balance of our investment funds to help insulate the island's economy against any future shocks. And we began that process when we transferred 50 million pounds uh, this earlier this year into what's called the stabilization fund following approval from the state assembly. And we're going to continue to grow that fund further over the rest of the planned period with a deposit of £20 million next year from uh, the Consolidated Fund and £16 million a year thereafter. Um, that is, if we just go back actually, that's slightly jargonistic, 
But what we're doing is that's a medium, uh, it's a fund for the medium term, and that, if we have a downturn, is the first reserve that we can tap into. And that's then about doing uh, sh hopefully short term, timely investment to help support people or to help support business or the economy, whatever it is, if we are hitting, for example, as we had in 2008, the financial crash, uh, if there are unintended consequences coming out of Brexit. So this is about prudence and planning uh, for the medium term. Go to the next slide. So then we've got the strategic uh, reserve, <coughs> the rainy, what we all know as the rainy day fund. And uh, what we're basically doing is reinvesting the investment returns into that fund. Um, and so that's basically steady as it goes. That's the projection that we're showing during the period if investment returns carry on as they have been on average, as in fact, there will also be ups and downs uh, in that period. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to use um, the profit and loss account, what we call the consolidated fund. That's got a very healthy balance of around £161 million pounds on it, and that's how we're going to fund much of the capital program. And that, so that's in, uh, in addition to the transfers into the stabilisation fund, allocations for housing, and also we're uh, putting £5 million pounds to pump, pump prime what's being referred to as the new climate emergency fund, which is basically as a result of the state's decision uh, earlier this year about climate change. Now, if we go to the long-term care fund, um, which hopefully you are familiar with, but that was set up in 2013 to help islanders cover their long-term care costs. Now, the aging population means that twice as many people will need help in the future, and forecasts show that at the current 1% rate, contribution rate, the fund would run out of money in the next seven to eight years. That's the dark red line that goes down and then goes negative. So what we're doing is we're proposing a 1% increase in the contribution rate and, to ra and a raise in the contributions cap to ensure we can continue to support uh, people's care needs. And that, what that does, that leaves it sustainable for, I think it's the next 25 years, roughly. Um, now, the crucial thing there to also remember is that just as most people don't pay tax at the headline rate of 20%, the effective rate is usually less, the long-term care rate is actually reduced for all marginal rate taxpayers, so most people won't, in reality, actually pay that full extra 1%. It's up to 1%, as well, and it'll depend on individual circumstances. So, if we then go to um, the Social Security Fund, um, so as with the long-term care fund, we continue to uh, protect the balance of the Social Security Fund to ensure it remains sustainable for future generations to come. We're going to be proposing improvements to family-friendly benefits. That's going to be funded through an increase in employer contributions. That's going to be coming to the Assembly relatively shortly, so we'll see how that is received. Now let's come to the um, spending plans. And sometimes this can be a difficult decision, a difficult discussion. You know, so Jasmine, do I like to spend money? But actually, really and honestly, uh, there is a lot of uh, stuff we have to do, given actually a legacy of decades of underinvestment in certain areas. Um, so what this chart actually puts it into context, it shows our commitment to increase spending over the next four years to help improve island services and facilities. And this is a revenue expenditure including depreciation and I believe transfers to the reserves that I've talked about. So the grey bars, have I just gone quiet? Mm -hmm. I just gone quiet. That's good. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> right, can you actually hear me if I don't use the microphone? Yes. Okay, right, let's turn that off and then I can... Ba batteries run out there again. <laughs> Five feet equipment the meeting. Um, so the grey bars show the um, actual spend over the last four years and the green bars uh, show the proposed effectively steady increase over the government plan period. So the revenue expenditure, this is before depreciation, will rise from 824 million in 2020 to around 924 million in 2023 <coughs> over that four year period. What we've also, uh, when I say we've had to do, what we are doing is we've developed a capital spending program which does make very long term investment in the fabric of our island these are also intended to fund longer term cost saving initiatives. So it's about investing in refurbishing and replacing a number of legacy issues or legacy <coughs> assets which have gone underfunded for many years. Uh, and that includes things like outdated infrastructure, 
that can extend into IT systems quite significantly, and it's creating, improving, and extending assets that do actually <coughs> back up the services that we deliver. And that is mainly funded from our reserves, and they have grown significantly as a result of the island's economic performance over the past few years. Then we get to um, something <coughs> of interest in certain quarters, it's certainly one of mine, which is the efficiencies over four years. And what we've done is we've committed to making 40 million of efficiencies next year, and 100 million in total over the four years of the plan. So that's 40 million next year, then 20 million for each year for the next three years. Now, what we have done, uh, and um, a slight update actually, so Council Minister essentially approved uh, that next stage, being uh, simple, honest, and so that will be going to scrutiny uh, probably tomorrow. Um, so that will give them over nine and a half weeks to actually look at those details. We have committed to sharing the full and final details with the State's Assembly and Islanders in October. As I said, scrutiny get it tomorrow. Um, and this put it into some context, there's been a little degree of, uh, of hubbub around the, around the number. It's actually about less than 5% of next year's budget. And uh, the state's members and islanders do have a fair de degree of detailed information about the other 95% to spend, which we published back in July. There will be more to come, and there'll be more to come uh, in, a, in a fairly stepped process. So when we publish the details, I really do hope you will be reassured that they're genuine efficiencies it is about doing things better, cutting out duplication and cutting out waste. But it isn't about cutting services. And so the efficiencies fall into four main areas. It's about a modern workforce, it's about more efficient services, <coughs> commercial government operations, and it's about more efficient government structures. And I'll just touch on that a little bit more. I'm still in the States, so I'll, I'll, I'll say it here again. Um, this is, it feels, and it may be not very scientific, but I've been through about three of these in the past, where people have made various promises, we're going to save lots of money. I was up at Durrell, goodness knows when, probably 2007, 2008, and um, uh, there was a lovely graphic for all politicians or, uh, and officers that were in the room, and it talked about should government, you know, what services should be provided, should government provide them, should somebody else provide them, at what cost, that type of decision tree. And it's something I was thinking, this is really good, you know, as an accountant. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody stood up and said, actually, just by chance, if we give you an alternative example or suggestion, and we'll just take 10% of everybody's budget. And that's what happened. So what that is, the 10% is a straight pork pork salami slicing, it's a straight cut. This is, uh, the discussion we've been having is very much around, let's take out the duplication. If you do have two people doing similar jobs, and one's about to retire, do you need to replace them? It is about what we call highly technical, better utilization of assets and things like that. That could be as simple as scheduling how you use it. Uh, so I won't go into all those, sort of, uh, those details, but that discussion, it is challenging. It is hard this year because all of this is the first part of a process. And actually, given all the change going on in the organization, it's probably the first time that a lot of people have genuinely gone through this. Uh, it will get easier the next discussion next year, and it will get hopefully easier the following year. I'm looking at some of the officers in the room who are um, looking at me with a certain expression, but that is the intention. <laughs> so, now let's get on to the other bit, which is the, uh, the budget measures. Now, that hopefully you've all been given a handout. It summarizes the different tax measures proposed for next year. I'm not going to go through all the detail. Uh, some of them are listed up there. But um, they are trying to design, we are trying to be quite careful about not putting too much pressure on the taxpayer. Um, broadly speaking, the increased income tax thresholds cover, um, in terms of the impact on individuals, cover the increased duties. So if you're a, an, um, a, a, a standard, ta uh, if you're a normal taxpayer, as it were, you should see um, a slight diminution in your tax liability notionally, uh, and that notionally should offset the duty increases that we're putting in place, which are mainly on alcohol and fuel. But anyway, the intention there is, is around delivering on the, uh, the strategic plan priorities, which is about finders' health and well-being and protecting the environment. So the highest duty increases are on tobacco, high-strength alcohol, to encourage islanders to make healthier choices. And I'm afraid so my glass of wine is going to get more expensive, uh, but I'm not a smoker. But we've also proposed increases in fuel duty, and that's to fund a new climate emergency fund, and that's about starting to help to 
tackle our contribution within climate change. And then finally, we'd be delighted to know, I'd like to stress this is a government plan for sustainable well-being, for responsible spending, but also for delivering the priorities agreed in the common strategic policy, but also taking account of some decisions made by the states around or since that time.